Like I've been saying for a while now, we all may hate how the Nintendo Switch's online service distributes classic games compared to how they used to do it with the Virtual Console, but even so, we're all still gonna rejoice if and when they start adding new console libraries to the lineup, which is why I took it upon myself to help Nintendo decide which 20 games to start out with with all of their consoles from the previous generations. And to be honest, I thought I'd finally put this issue to bed once and for all after covering all of Nintendo's console libraries that actually have a shot at getting their own compilations, but then I saw the Nintendo DS crying in the corner after being ignored, which made me feel kind of bad, so I figured what the hell, even though DS games are probably never gonna come to the Switch, the dual screen handheld's been good to me over the years, so I figured I might as well make a list of the 20 best games from that platform to bring to the Switch while I'm at it. I mean, the Switch tablet does have touch controls, and you could just put both of the screens on the tablet like they did with the DS games on the Wii U, and yeah, I'm well aware that this would kinda suck since you'd pretty much only be able to play most of these games in handheld mode and probably have to buy a separate stylus too, but seeing as how we're all subscribing to the Switch's online service just to play Smash anyway, I'll take the free DS games, even if they may be a little bit awkward to play. So now that we've got all that mumbo jumbo out of the way, make sure to sit back in your dad's cushiest beanbag, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and allow me, the world's least controversial towel boy, Cameron all one word, to tell you the 20 best Nintendo DS games to kick things off with on the Switch's online service. But much like the other videos, just keep in mind that this is not a top 20 DS games list, and I'm trying to save some goodies so that future updates can make an impact later on. So with all that being said, let's start things off with number one, Mario Kart DS. Okay, so right off the bat, the issue with this game coming to the Switch's online service is the fact that unlike the Wii U, the Switch doesn't have a microphone anywhere on the gamepad or any of its controllers, so you wouldn't be able to blow your balloons up slightly faster in balloon battle at the expense of feeling lightheaded afterwards. However, seeing as I could just fill your balloons up by pressing a regular button, there's really no reason why this game can't come to the Switch. I mean, sure, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is better in every way imaginable, but even so, I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't want to play this game online again for nostalgic purposes, and it's still a pretty solid game in its own right for the two or three people out there who may not have bought Mario Kart 8. So anyway, you look at it, it'd be kind of a crime to not include what just might be the most definitive game on the original DS. Number 2. New Super Mario Bros. If Mario Kart DS wasn't the most definitive game on the platform, then it'd probably be New Super Mario Bros, and yeah, I know that this series has kind of a bad reputation these days for being unimaginative, but after years of not getting a new 2D Mario game, even on the Game Boy Advance it would have been friggin' perfect, Nintendo finally came to their senses and gave us one on the DS, which is actually the game that made me buy the console in the first place, and if I'm being honest, it was just okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's certainly not a bad game in any way, but it definitely relied a little bit too much on nostalgia and didn't really offer any new power-ups that were truly anything special. While some of the new abilities were kinda cool, I guess, the turtle shell just flat out sucked to the point where I'd actively avoid grabbing them since running with them pretty much just gets you killed. Overall though, for a free game meant to beef a subscription service up though, I'd say that this one's definitely worth playing if you somehow never have. Number 3. The Legend of Zelda The Phantom Hourglass Alright, so now we're at the first touch control base game, and without a stylus, it's definitely gonna be pretty tricky since there's really no way around it with Phantom Hourglass where the entire game's built around them. But like I said, there's really no way to add DS games to the Switch's online service if you're gonna exclude all the games built around touch controls, so sorry to say, but we're just gonna have to deal with handheld only mode and buy a separate stylus for these types of games, which is a pain, but again, we're all paying $20 a year just to play Smash online anyway, so who cares, it's free. And for those of us willing to deal with the stylus issue, then there's some pretty great games in store for us, such as thus. Speaking of touch controls, though, that's actually why a lot of people kind of hate this game, but I think if you're open-minded about it, you'll have a lot of fun. It's definitely not the best Zelda by any means, and there's parts of the game where you have to solve the same puzzles over and over again that are outrageously stupid, but if you love Zelda and want something a little different, then this official sequel to Wind Waker is a pretty good place to look. Number 4. Metroid Prime Hunters. Everyone likes to talk about the Metroid Prime Trilogy, but those of us who are a little more sophisticated know that there's actually one more game in the series that most people seem to have forgotten about. Sure, it might not be as good as the other three more popular games, but it's still a pretty impressive launch title for the original DS, and while I don't really mind the touch controls here, I feel like this one wouldn't be too hard for Nintendo to provide traditional controls as an option. To be honest, I don't really remember if there were other touch controls in the game outside of the shooting, or if the game took advantage of any of the DS's other gimmicks, but it's not like there's any kind of online database where I could simply search for the answer to that question or anything like that. And seeing as I'm pretty sure none of you played this game yourselves, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that there weren't any other touch controls in the game that don't involve shooting. And if that's the case, then there's really no reason why this game can't be played in dock mode if Nintendo put a little bit of extra effort into it. Number 5. Yoshi's Island DS 
Speaking of games from popular franchises that everyone forgot about, even Nintendo themselves forgot about the second game in the Yoshi's Island series when they announced Yoshi's New Island on the 3DS, and to this day, I have no idea why, but if I had to guess why no one remembers this game, then I'd say that the title Yoshi's Island DS probably sounded like a port to a lot of people. And you know what? Sometimes that makes me weep in the middle of the night, because I 100 percent of this game myself, and let me tell you, I think that this definitely deserves to be remembered. Key feature to this game that makes it stand out from the originals is that rather than just protecting baby Mario, you're also protecting other popular Nintendo Nintendo babies that all grant Yoshi different abilities. I wouldn't say it's as good as the original, but it's definitely way too good of a game to be overlooked, so hopefully we get another way to play this game someday, and what better way to do it than on the Switch's online service? Number 6. Super Princess Peach Alright, so a common theme in this video is that most of these games have been forgotten about by the vast majority, but this one right here is one that I'm pretty sure Nintendo would want most people to forget about in the ultra-sensitive year of 2020. The gist here is that Princess Peach finally has her own game, which you'd think would make a lot of people happy, but given the fact that her abilities all revolve around her being overly emotional, I'd imagine that this title would be a little controversial if it came to the Switch, and that's a damn shame, because Super Princess Peach is a unique 2D platformer that people who were disappointed in New Super Mario Bros. might appreciate being a part of the catalog. Number 7. Kirby Mass Attack this right here is one of my favorite Kirby games, and Nintendo DS games in general, but seeing as how it came out when the 3DS was already a thing, most people chose to skip it, despite the fact that the 3DS was backwards compatible and didn't really have any good exclusives out at the time. If you've never played this game, you basically control up to 10 Kirbys with the stylus, kind of like Pikmin in the sense that you kill larger enemies by ganging up on them, solving puzzles, and collect things. However, the main difference here is that Kirby Mass Attack's an ass here cuter if that's your cup of tea. Number 8. Diddy Kong Racing I know Donkey Kong Country took forever to come to the Super Nintendo's online catalog, and that it was likely because there were rights issues with Rare and Microsoft that probably made it more worthwhile to give the game its own spotlight. But even so, I don't care. I still want Diddy Kong Racing on day one if the DS library ever comes to the Switch's online service, which it won't, but, you know, if it did. Much like on the 64, Diddy Kong Racing's that healthy alternative that I'm sure Mario Kart pretends to be cool with, but since Nintendo doesn't exactly treat any of their other popular racing games with care, eh, let's just say that I'm not very surprised that Nintendo let Microsoft buy Rare out. Number 9. Tetris DS I know you might think that one of the 6,000 versions of Tetris out there would be a wasted spot on this list, but in my opinion, this is honestly my very favorite version of this game, which you'd probably disagree with if you're purely into Tetris's base game at any kind of competitive level, but if you're a little more of a casual fan of Tetris and want a twist involving various game modes featuring Nintendo IPs, then I think you'd be pleasantly surprised with the somewhat obscure Nintendo Tetris crossover. Number 10. Metroid Prime Pinball as we all know, pretty much any video game character is capable of becoming any kind of ball whatsoever seems to have their own pinball spin-off, so it's no surprise that we got one for Metroid as well, and if we're picking 20 games from any console's library to be a part of any kind of compilation, then I think it's important to make sure that some of them are a little more laid back, especially for a handheld, and as far as I'm concerned, you can never have too many Metroid games, even if some of them may be spin-offs. Well, you know, except for that Metroid spin-off anyway. That game can frig right off. Number 11. Super Mario 64 DS Super Mario 64 DS was more than just a simple copy-and-paste handheld port of Super Mario 64. In fact, this game's got so much extra content like playable characters who all have their own unique challenges and minigames that I consider this to be the definitive version of Super Mario 64. Well, aside from the controls anyway, which suck pretty big horse ass if you're using the D-pad, and, well, these types of games aren't meant to be played with a stylus either, but thankfully the Switch has got analog sticks that make controlling Mario and his friends a little bit easier. Sure, it might not have felt very perfect using the analog stick on the 3DS with this game, but with a little bit of tweaking, they could probably calibrate it to work a little better on the Switch. And even if Nintendo didn't touch anything, which I'm sure they wouldn't, the controls are really more of a nitpick than anything else. So if you're gonna try and tell me with a straight ass that you don't want any version of Mario 64 in your game collection, then off is the direction in which you can frig kind sir or ma'am. Number 12. Advance Wars Dual Strike. Like I said in the Game Boy Advance video, the Advance Wars series is pretty similar to Fire Emblem, except instead of ye old warriors like swordsmen, you battle with modern military equipment like tanks. And to be honest, there's not that much more to Dual Strike on the DS other than the fact that you've got two screens now. But you know what, if you like turn-based tactical games, then you'll love the Advance Wars series, and if not, then just play one of the other 19 games on here, because there's no friggin' way this game shouldn't be included here, especially since I'm not including any of the Fire Emblem games in this video due to the fact that all the ones in the DS were just remakes. Number 13, Kirby Canvas Curse. 
For a franchise that has so many spin-offs, it's actually pretty impressive that a character as silly as Kirby can manage to pull it off as often as he does, and Canvas Curse, in my opinion, is one of the more interesting ones to date. For some reason, Kirby becomes a total pile of shit in this game and won't move whatsoever, so it's your job to guide his fat ass through 24 levels that are all pretty clever and fun. Number 14. Hotel Dusk Room 215. You know, for a game published by Nintendo, this one right here sure doesn't seem very Nintendo-y, but I can assure you that Hotel Dusk would definitely provide some much-needed variety to the lineup. It's pretty much a point-and-click interactive mystery novel where you gotta solve puzzles using pretty much all the DS's gimmicks, which might be a bit problematic in terms of using the microphone, but again, I'm sure a billion-dollar company like Nintendo could find a way around this issue. This definitely isn't the kind of game that'd be for everybody, and it's not even the best point-and-click game out there, but even so, I still personally had a lot of fun with this one, and I feel like including it would be necessary in any compilation of DS games if you want to represent every kind of game that the platform offered. Number 15. Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini Land Mayhem Remember when I talked about the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series in my previous two videos about the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance? No? Well, this game's a sequel to both of those, with a unique twist of having a larger screen, obviously due to the fact that the DS had two of them, and instead of solving puzzles controlling Mario's jabroni ass himself, the goal here is to guide the mechanical Mini Marios to a clear path. I've only briefly played this game myself, but after beating the first two games in the series that are technically a continuation of the original Donkey Kong arcade, I've been meaning to get around to this one on the DS, and even though it'd probably be a better idea to just play my physical copy, I'd still get a kick out of playing it on the Switch despite the poopy controls. Number 16. Sonic Rush. Alright, now we're getting to the five obligatory third-party games that usually come to the Switch's online catalogs, and what better way to kick things off with than with Sonic Rush? During the days where Sonic games were botching ass all over the place in three dimensions, the fine developers over at DIMPS were consistently keeping 2D Sonic alive and well in the Game Boy Advance and DS, and as great as the Sonic Advance series was, I thought that Sonic Rush took things to the next level with the boost feature, and the graphics and music gave the game its own unique identity. Number 17. Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Pretty much any of the Castlevania games on the DS would make fantastic additions to any game library, so if they're all good, then you might as well card them out in the order they were originally released in. Much like with the Game Boy Advance Castlevania titles, Konami knew damn well what they were doing with the 2D series and the new Metroidvania genre at this point, which makes you wonder what the hell happened. You know what, if they're not gonna make new games regardless of who still works for their company, then the least they could do is let us play the old ones again. And if they're not gonna put the Game Boy Advance and DS games into any compilations, then eh, they might as well let Nintendo use them, you know what I'm saying? Eh? Eh? <laughs> All right. Number 18, Contra 4. Out of all the forgotten games on the Nintendo DS, Contra 4 surprises me the most since it's a full-fledged numbered entry to the series, and despite the fact that most of the other Contra games that were made during the same time period sucked butt, this one's badass as all hell, and it certainly earned its number. If you like the first three Contra games, then you're definitely gonna love Contra 4, because it's hard as all hell, the game's gonna make fun of you and not let you play the last two levels if you play it on easy mode, and at the same time, the game's not unnecessarily long, which makes completing it in one sitting actually feasible, which is perfect for a handheld. Number 19. Okami Den. Despite the fact that everyone seems to know what Okami is, and that it's a great game, almost nobody's actually played it themselves, and the same fact's even truer for the game's sequel on the DS. Much like Kirby Mass Attack, Okami Den came out while the 3DS was the big cheese in town, which was the same exact problem the original had on the PS2, but even though the sequel isn't nearly as good, it's still got everything that made the original great, from the brush-based gameplay, story, all the way to the charm. And seeing as how most people have never gotten around to playing this, adding it to the Switch's online service would be a great way to get a few people to subscribe, at least for a month anyway. Besides, it's not like Capcom's fat asses are doing anything with this game, so they might as well let Nintendo whore it out. Number 20. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Out of all the hidden gems on the DS, this is one that even I didn't know about, but as soon as I started doing a little bit more digging, I decided that I've got to get my greasy little paws on this. It's mostly a puzzle game made by the creator of the Ace Attorney series, where he plays a ghost who tries to solve the mystery of who killed him. And seeing as how the entire Ace Attorney series was already ported over to the Switch, it kind of makes sense to give this game another chance at life. And yeah, I know I could just play the mobile version of this game on my stepdad's cell phone, but the last time I tried that, I ended up stumbling upon a search history that I'm never going to be able to forget about. So if anybody at Nintendo or Capcom are listening to this, and I know that they are, then don't be a dingus and just put this on the Switch. And also, you know, just put DS games on the online catalog in general, which, you know, I know you won't do, but I figured I'd ask. But anyway, that's my list. Much like with the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, Pokemon games would be a little bit confusing with all the different versions, and besides, Game Freak would probably be too greedy to just give these away for free in updates anyway. But even so, if you still want to berate me in the comments for not including any of them, or say anything else at all, then feel free to do so, and as always, I'll try my goddamnedest to respond to everybody at some point. 
Let me tell you, if there's two badasses who deserve to be in the Switch's online catalog and Nintendo DS games, then it would definitely be today's patrons of the day, Aksha and Justin D. If you want to be badasses like these two, then consider supporting FU Game Crew on Patreon for loot boxes and silly rewards in the mail. Send pictures or videos if you're rocking merch if you want to make cameos in my videos, and follow me on Twitch if you ever want to hang out whenever I play video games sometimes. My name's Cameron All One Word, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty, thank you for your support.